So again, if we look at it, I, I, I kind of mentioned some of these things before, but I wanted to talk about a few other things. This comes out of a, this is a graphic actually that was published uh, in the journal Frontiers in Pharmacology on the functions of lipoic acid. So as we're looking at this, what we're looking at are kind of some of the core functions of what alpha lipoic acid can do. You can see up here, I mentioned some of these things earlier, but number one is an antioxidant effect. So again, I told you it, it acts as an antioxidant, both fat and water soluble. It preserves vitamin C and E. It also helps CoQ10 do its job and it regenerates glutathione. So that's what the second part here is, it regeneration okay, of other antioxidants and then the reparation of oxidized proteins. So it repairs damaged proteins in your body. So these very important antioxidant functions make lipoic acid, again, a very good friend in terms of somebody who's got low antioxidant status. Then we have over here glucose and lipid metabolism. So this is, again, this is blood sugar, right, or glucose. And so very important. I showed you research on, uh, especially that meta-analysis, it showed great benefit in lowering blood sugar for people uh, who are taking lipoic acid that were diabetic. And then we also have that it acts as an anti-inflammatory. So it inhibits something called NF kappa B, which is a chemical compound that's produced uh, when there's inflammation in the body and it makes inflammation even worse. So alpha lipoic acid has actually been shown to inhibit this very inflammatory chemical. And then the last kind of main function or one of not, these are not all the functions, this is, again, this is just kind of a summary, is the chelating of metal ions. So what chelation means is Greek, chelate is claw. That's what it's a Greek word for claw. So it grabs, basically it grabs heavy metal and it helps to pull it. Now, it doesn't grab all heavy metals. And I've seen some, some kind of mythical, I've seen people who didn't really know much about the biochemistry of lipoic acid talking about how taking lipoic acid pulls mercury out of your body and sends it to your brain. That's not ever been proven. That's not ever been shown. That's not ever anything that's ever been researched. And I want to be very cautious because a lot of people get scared away from taking lipoic acid when it might be very beneficial out of this fear. And this is a non-realistic fear. Lipoic acid doesn't pull heavy metal out of your tissue and send it to your brain. Now, lipoic acid, it can pass the blood-brain barrier, which is what makes it such a great chemical to use for inflammation. It's what makes it such a great chemical to use for its regenerative and antioxidant effects because as your brain ages, especially uh, you know, now that we're calling Alzheimer's disease type 3 diabetes, in essence, it's a damage of elevated, and elevated blood sugar in the brain tissue, right? So we know that alpha lipoic acid from a dementia perspective can help with blood sugar management can help as an antioxidant and to regenerate damaged oxidized proteins, which what do we find in Alzheimer's patients? We find something called beta amyloid placking, which is an oxidized protein substrate. So we know alpha lipoic acid helps with those things. We know it has anti-inflammatory properties. Again, we know dementia and Alzheimer's are, is, a, is an inflammatory disease. And we know that brain damage can also be caused by heavy metals, right? So mercury can cause brain damage and cadmium can cause brain damage and lead can cause brain damage. That, that doesn't mean that lipoic acid pulls those metals into your brain. So again, I want to just be clear, that's not something that happens. So it can be a helpful chelating agent. So if you've got a history of silver amalgams or mercury fillings in your mouth, and you're considering using something to help uh, to kind of pull some, as you get those fillings removed by a good environmental dentist or biological dentist, alpha lipoic acid might be something your dentist would recommend as a chelating agent to kind of help prevent that mercury as they're removing it from, from basically from creating a major toxicity in your body. So again, it helps with the chelation of metals and that's again, one of its important functions. So we were over here earlier and we were talking about, again, the functions of lipoic acid. And so again, this is just summary, cellular regeneration, antioxidant function, anti-inflammatory function, helps with blood sugar levels, aids in branched chain amino acid, uh, metabolism, preserves CoQ10 and regenerates vitamin E and vitamin C. These are all major functions. Now, it also plays a role in how your body generates energy in your mitochondria. There's some other biochemical processes that alpha lipoic acid is important in. But I want to, those are kind of more biochemically heavy, and I don't want to get into that because I don't want you guys going to sleep on me. Um, I think we're froze again. But Causes of alpha lipoic acid deficiency. Let's talk a little bit about that. I said earlier that alpha lipoic acid was not essential, meaning your body 
can produce it. It can synthesize it internally if you've got healthy mitochondria. So again, those of you with chronic degenerative diseases of mitochondrial dysfunction, chronic fatigue, ten, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, uh, and other chronic degenerative inflammatory diseases, um, you guys might actually see a benefit out of, out of utilization of CoQ10. I'm sorry, out of utilization of alpha-lipoic acid. Um, but let's talk about some things that can contribute to its deficiency. So even though your body knows how to make it, like these are things that generally tend to contribute to it, to it being too low. So in cases of severe stress, right? So severe stress, um, and when I say severe stress, the chronic degenerative disease fits in that category of severe stress. A lot of things do. If you go to a job every day that you hate, if you uh, have overtrained, if you work out too aggressively and you found yourself in an overtrained scenario, uh, and you're wiped out. If you've got adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout from, from long-term chronic inflammatory stress, like those are all areas where severe stress may be playing a role. Severe stress is going to cause your body to use up more alpha lipoic acid. So here, you know, here's how stress increases cortisol. Okay. When your cortisol goes up to help, because remember cortisol is a stress hormone. So when you have severe stress, you get an increase in cortisol and then from an increase in cortisol one of the side effects of elevated cortisol is cortisol elevates your blood sugar that's one of the side effects of, of cortisol elevation so cortisol tells your liver to dump sugar into your bloodstream even if you're not eating sugar even if you're eating a low sugar diet or a keto diet something with very little to no sugar if you've got chronic stress again one of the side effects is that elevation in cortisol that causes your body to dump more sugar into the bloodstream from the liver and then again, that when you have an increased sugar load in the blood consistently over time, that's going to drain the nutrients necessary to help you metabolize that sugar, to get rid of it, to properly utilize it. And so what are we talking about there? We're talking about alpha lipoic acid, right? It's one of the nutrients necessary to help glucose get inside your cell. But we've got other nutrients that are also going to be depleted as a result of that so zinc deficiency can occur as a result of high blood sugar, chromium deficiency, vitamin B3 deficiency, magnesium deficiency, vitamin D deficiency. So there's a lot of nutrients associated here. Let's see if I can get through this because I'd really like to draw this out for you. So again, that chronic stress increased cortisol, which leads to increase in sugar. Okay. And if we, again, I think I talked about this before with you, but if you've got elevated sugar, Glucose sends a message to the pancreas. So if this is your pancreas, it sends a message to your pancreas. Your pancreas responds by producing insulin. The insulin docks to the insulin receptor on your cell. That sends a message to open that glucose door in your cell so that glucose can come in and you can make ATP, there, or otherwise known as energy. But if we break that down a little bit more, for your pancreas to get the message, you've got to have adequate vitamin D. So if your vitamin D levels are low, you're, it's going to affect how your glucose responds. To properly produce insulin, you need magnesium, you need zinc, you need vitamin B12. The insulin receptor is made out of chromium. Chromium's nickname is GTF or glucose tolerance factor. So chromium plus vitamin B3 equals the insulin receptor. And then this message that goes through the cell here is calcium dependent. Calcium helps to deliver that message. And then for you to be able to take that glucose and break it down into ATP, that requires all the B vitamins. It requires CoQ10. It requires vitamin C and it requires copper. And so you could be, you know, again, if you're under that severe stress, driving up cortisol, driving up sugar. You're burning through all of these vitamins and minerals at a higher pace to try to keep up with that increase in sugar. And one of those, again, one of those nutrients right here is alpha lipoic acid. It helps the sugar get into the cell, ALA, alpha lipoic acid. So that severe stress. And we'd also say the modern SAD, that standard American diet, right? The modern SAD diet and lifestyle. So if you live in America, or any other industrialized country where fast food is the norm, where not exercising is the norm, where going to school and taking classes to pass standardized tests, but not going outside on the playground to play is the norm. Uh, if you are 
going to work every day and you spend eight hours sitting and no time exercising and don't have time for exercise in your life, don't get adequate sunshine, don't sleep very well, that's the sad diet and lifestyle. Those fundamentals um, are ignored largely by most of the population, which is why we have one of the sickest and unhealthiest populations in the history of mankind as it relates to chronic degenerative disease, because this right here does the same thing. It can also lead to that elevation in cortisol. And then one of the other things that I see frequently, just because of my expertise, is gluten-induced intestinal damage. So gluten-induced intestinal damage leads to malabsorption and malnutrition. Now you can get some alpha-lipoic acid in your diet. It's not that the diet has zero alpha-lipoic acid. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.